back in the day was LB 289. And so she championed this piece of legislation from the perspective of an understanding that our constitution is written in such a way that our rights and privileges are preserved within it. And that there are certain bodies that are responsible for certain aspects of our law and the state certainly should qualify as that. And so Senator Epke has been a profound supporter of our efforts in getting 289 and then now LB 68 move forward. And we'd like to welcome her to speak. today and, and thank the Nebraska Firearm Owners Association for, for arranging for this and having putting it together. Um, what a great day. Glad the clouds went away. It's a little windy and a little cool, but it's a great day to be out here celebrating liberty. Um, I, I want to say something about the NFOA. Um, the NFOA, you know, there are, there, there are bigger organizations out there and there are organizations out there who are absentee but are loud, but the NFOA is present in the legislature and and they are a sane um, voice for firearm owners uh, firearm owners all over nebraska so um thank you for what you do um, let me just make a couple of comments um, regarding gun legislation and dick already covered a lot of this stuff and 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 honestly um i was very fortunate um this summer i had when i took over in January, as Judiciary Committee Chair, I had two great legal counsels. And uh, this summer, one of them took a job uh, to do something else. And lo and behold, Dick was available, and it was a great, uh, great catch for me. And I'm very happy to have him in the office. Uh, he provides me with great counsel um, on, all, on all matters, but, but certainly on firearms, uh, we are very happy to have him in the office. Um, most things um, regarding the guns have historically come to the Judiciary Committee. And as you all know, if you've paid any attention over the years, sometimes it's very difficult to get firearm legislation out of the Judiciary Committee. Um, and that is in large part because of the way that we set up our committees and because the Judiciary Committee is oftentimes the last one that they fill <laughs> uh, with, uh, with, 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 with uh, the, the more conservative libertarian element. And so, uh, oftentimes, we don't. Uh, we get people from Lincoln, and you know, attorneys from Lincoln and Omaha who like to be on the committee, and they are oftentimes not as uh, as, as gun friendly as we would like. Um, although I, ha I do chair the committee, we have uh, we have trouble getting things out. Um, my preemption bill, I think, was the last one besides 666 <laughs> that, uh, that 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 came out um, in in 2015 and 16. Um, this year's bill, LB 68, uh, that Senator Hilgers is carrying, was actually referenced to the government committee, which I would argue was a good place for it, um, not just because it was easier to get out of committee, but because it, do it does deal with the role of local government. And uh, that's an appropriate place for it to go. Um, a lot of times bills go someplace based on how you write the bill, and, and it was tweaked enough this year that um, and that it was sent to the government committee. Um, he's carrying that. It's a modified version of 289 from two years ago, and um, it, it got uh, full hearing, um, passed out in, onto the floor, and now um, it was it was being filibustered at last uh, at last argument, I guess. And uh, we will have a full debate on it, I'm sure, um, and, and get. Uh, we think we've got the votes, as I understand it. Um, at least we did couple of weeks ago. So uh, as soon as we have the 33 votes required to, to, to uh, move through a filibuster, we'll, we'll move that one on. Um, other bills, you know, we're looking in my office at some, po at some possibilities for legislation. Um, we haven't settled on anything for sure. At the very least, um, there are, um, and this is something that Dick brought to me the other day, there's some um, instances where somebody who has a concealed carry permit but has some sort of a um, uh, has an inter interaction with uh, police officers or emergency personnel. They have their firearms receipted and taken. They have a hard time getting them back um, from the local police. And so we want to put some clarification into statute about uh, how tough should it be for somebody who is in a car accident or who has had some sort of exchange with emergency personnel and, 
you know, just clarify the concealed handgun um, permit uh, statutes. Um, what else? Um, we've had uh, an interesting time. We will continue to have interesting times in the legislature, I think. Um, I know that there are some elements uh, that we've talked about. Uh, LB, what was it 184 that we had a couple years ago? Is that what it was? I can't remember that. Uh, sorry, the, uh, private schools. the pri for private schools, there's been some talk about somebody bringing something like that back. Um, that will be a little more difficult, I think, if it comes through judiciary. But I think it's a good thing for us to continue to chip away, to continue to keep this before people, and to continue to talk about it. And it's important to do it in a way that is rational and reasonable and policy um, policy solid and philosophy. Um, philosophy based, not emotionally based. So it's important for us to talk about our Constitution. Nick talked about that a few minutes ago. Um, not only is it in the Second Amendment of the U.S. Constitution, but it's also in Article One of the Nebraska Constitution. And that, uh, from my standpoint, is even more specific and, you know, makes things much more clear. Um, even if you say that the Second Amendment, you know, only applies to militia, Article One of the Nebraska Constitution clearly clearly um, refers to all of us um, for any purpose. So um, I think it's important for us to keep that in mind, to talk rationally and reasonably and friendly um, whenever possible with your senators. And uh, thanks for being here today.